Next item of business is a statement by Jean Freeman on the Royal Hospital for Children and Young People. The Cabinet Secretary to take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call the Cabinet Secretary. Ten minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for this opportunity to update Parliament on the Royal Hospital for Children and Young People and the Department of Clinical Neurosciences. Before I do, I want to put on record my sincere thanks to all the staff for their forbearance in difficult circumstances. I am genuinely sorry that the considerable work they put into planning the move to the new hospital could not yet be realised. I am acutely aware that for many, the halt created significant personal challenges to important domestic arrangements. This morning, I met with the chair of NHS Lothian and the employee director and have written again to all staff involved to update them on the current situation that I am now setting out to the Chamber. Let me also record my thanks to the patients and families for their forbearance and patience. The safest possible care for their children is my overriding priority, and I'm sorry that any impact the current situation has had on them. I will also today write to the Auditor General. I have kept her fully informed to date, and I want to assure Parliament that we will, of course, fully cooperate with any further scrutiny Audit Scotland or the committees of this Parliament may choose to undertake. Presiding Officer, following my decision to halt the opening of the new facilities in July, I commissioned two reports, one from KPMG and the other from NHS National Services Scotland. KPMG were asked to consider issues of governance and establish the facts leading to the decision to delay the move. NSS were asked to examine the whole site to advise me on relevant compliance issues. I am publishing both reports today. The NSS report provides a detailed assessment of key buildings and identifies issues which require to be resolved to ensure safety prior to occupation. While the report is technical, I would highlight the following areas. In ventilation and in addition, to the issue previously identified in critical care, remedial action is required on the quality of work in a number of areas, with specific issues identified in haematology and oncology. On water systems, independent testing identified no widespread contamination of the water systems, but NSS has recommended some remedial and precautionary actions, as well as a system-wide disinfection prior to occupation. On drainage and plumbing, NSS has recommended active monitoring of the drainage system and concluded that elements of plumbing require monitoring and routine disinfection, but that this is considered a low risk. NHS Lothian have accepted all the recommendations and their action plan is also published today. Phase two of the NSS review is assessing fire, medical gases and electrical safety. And while that work is still in progress, there is no indication that findings in these areas will create a further delay beyond that which I will set out. It is clear that there is significant work to be undertaken to ensure the site is fully compliant. The work that has been done over the past few weeks to identify and plan the remediation of all the outstanding issues allows me now to give a clearer indication of a realistic timeline for moving to the new hospital. The additional work recommended by NSS can be undertaken in parallel to the work to resolve the ventilation issue in critical care. The key consideration in determining when the move to the new facilities can take place is the time to rectify the critical care ventilation system. This work includes designing, procuring, and installing the solution for the critical care and then rigorously testing and validating it. This is work that I regret to say will take time. In the interest of patient safety, I will not authorise a move to the new site until this work has been completed, tested and found to be fully compliant. The work will be carried out as quickly as possible, but to ensure that it is done properly and to give maximum certainty to staff and patients, I have concluded that children's services will remain on their current site until next autumn. The Department of Clinical Neurosciences is unaffected by the issue in critical care 
However, the additional work required to rectify the other issues at the Children's Hospital may impact on the DCN clinical pathway. I am, though, mindful of the challenges faced in the current DCN location and have asked that the work on the Children's Hospital is phased to allow DCN to migrate earlier. My current expectation is that the DCN will be able to move in spring next year. The KPMG report on governance sets out a clear picture of human error and confusion over interpretation of standards and guidance and missed opportunities to spot and rectify that error despite clear references to the requirement to adhere to relevant technical guidance. Members will read the report in full, but in short, the main problem stems from a key document, the environmental matrix, first produced by NHS Lothian in late 2012, which was inconsistent with the guidance, but was referred to throughout the project. I want to be clear that I hold the principle of accountability in and of our health boards to be vitally important. This is a publicly funded project of strategic importance, which has not been delivered by NHS Lothian in compliance with the standards and guidance. That is unacceptable. There are clear issues to be considered now about accountability within the board. They must be considered carefully and with due process. And I will advise Parliament of the outcome of that work in due course. NHS Lothian is currently at level three of our performance escalation framework. However, given the issues with the new hospital and the number and level of issues to be rectified, the Scottish Government Health and Social Care Management Board has escalated NHS Lothian to stage four for this project. This means that in relation to this project, we have assessed that there are significant risks to delivery, quality, financial performance and safety, and that senior level external support is required. A senior programme director will be appointed, reporting directly to Scottish Government. All of this, the delay, the additional work needed at the new hospital and the additional work needed to ensure the existing sites can continue to operate well, all of it comes at an additional cost. Given that NHS Lothian had taken possession of the site, the unity payment of 1.35 million per month requires to be made even though the facilities are not yet open. But these payments were already budgeted for and so, strictly speaking, this is not an additional cost. The additional costs arise from the work needed to replace the critical care ventilation system, undertake the other remedial work identified by NSS, and work in respect of the continued operation and improvement of the current sites. These costs will continue to be refined and I will keep Parliament updated, but I can advise members today that the current estimate of additional costs for these works is £16 million. This is a publicly funded project, as I have said, of strategic importance, which has not been delivered in compliance with the standards and guidance required for the safety of patients and staff. The delay we now face will be borne by NHS staff in Lothian, by patients and their families, and the additional cost will be borne by the health portfolio. Presiding officer, there have been many major infrastructure projects delivered by NHS boards in Scotland on time, on budget and in compliance. However, we cannot have a repetition of the problems we see today. That's not right for the public purse and it's not good enough for patients or staff. In line with the programme for government, we will move swiftly to establish a new national body for reducing and effectively managing risks in the healthcare built environment. The new body will have oversight for the design, planning, construction and maintenance of major NHS infrastructure developments, not least in order to ensure effective infection prevention and control and compliance with standards and guidance. The NSS and KPMG reports are detailed and I appreciate that members will not have had time to read them fully before this statement. So I've arranged to meet opposition party spokespeople tomorrow to answer any questions they have. I have also written to the convener of the Health and Sport Committee and I'm of course very happy to provide his committee with additional information or to attend to answer questions. 
As I set out earlier, my overriding priority, and I know that is shared across this chamber, is patient safety. The children and families who depend on these hospital services should receive them in the safest way possible. The current situation is not one anyone would choose, but it is one that we will resolve and deliver the safe migration of service to the new Royal Hospital for Children and Young People and Department of Clinical Neurosciences. Thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for those questions when we must move on to the next item of business. The usual mantra, try to keep your questions after the front bench questions short. Uh, I call Miles Briggs, we followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced copy of her statement today. I have to say it takes a pretty cynical government to try to bury bad news by sneaking out two major reports at the very time Parliament are asked to hold ministers to account. Deputy Presiding Officer, today's statement begs more questions than it provides answers. The Cabinet Secretary today expects us to believe that human error and confusion and a failure of an environmental matrix means that no SNP ministers are responsible for seven years of this delayed project. Reading between the lines of the statement today, it looks like the Cabinet Secretary now intends to hang NHS management out for this problem. The Cabinet Secretary has been in her job now for a year. Her predecessor held the position for four years while all these delays and problems were happening. What responsibility will SNP ministers take from these reports today? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I have to say I find all of that deeply disappointing. Let me be really clear. I am sneaking nothing out. I said on the 4th of July, when I halted the move to the new hospital site, that patient safety was my priority. It is then, it remains now. I also said at that point, and in subsequent uh, issues, that I would publish the reports as soon as they were available. I have done that. I have done that and I have offered, please don't mutter at me from the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. I have offered yeah, yeah. a meeting with party spokespeople tomorrow precisely because I appreciate these reports are technical and that members are only seeing them today and they need time to review them and we will do that tomorrow and there will be plenty of opportunities, I'm sure for members to ask further questions. I do not expect you to believe anything, actually. The KPMG report is clear on what it says. So is the NSS report. I am acting on those reports. And you will know, I am sure, Mr Briggs, because you will have taken great effort to understand your brief, that responsibility for infrastructure build currently rests with boards. So it is the boards who are responsible for the build and the compliance. I have said clearly, PFG said it last week, that we now need to move to a situation where we hold in a closer way expertise and responsibility for compliance. So we are addressing these issues. If you would care to listen to what I'm saying, I think you will agree with me that the approach I took on the 4th of July have taken ever since and will absolutely take from now on is exactly the right one for patient safety, for our NHS staff, and for the public purse. Monica Lennon. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced sight of her statement. This project is a disaster. The statement throws up more questions than answers, presiding officer, so we now need to have a debate timetabled in government time. The KPMG reports on governance highlights human error, confusion over the application of standards and guidance, and missed opportunities to rectify mistakes. But we still don't have a clear picture of where responsibility lies. Are we to believe that no one is responsible? I think not. So I ask the Cabinet Secretary, does she fully agree with the reports? Does she believe these investigations are adequate? We know from the reports there was regular and extensive dialogue between NHS Lothian and Scottish Government. Who from the Scottish Government sat on the project board and where are they now? The role of NHS Lothian has been referenced many times in the statement, but ultimately the buck stops with the Health Secretary and with this government. So on a principle of accountability, we need a full-blown public inquiry. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree yes or no? Cabinet Secretary. Well, well, my straightforward answer to that is the one I've given before. No, I don't agree. Because I do not see, I do not see 
what difference a public inquiry would make to the work that we've already undertaken. And I do not believe, I do not believe when the focus should be on remedying this situation and moving patients and staff safely to the new site, what, why we would then distract them from all of that into a public inquiry when we have, when we have these reports, when I am here to be accountable for what boards are doing. I have said in my statement that there is more work to do with the board because I firmly believe in the accountability of NHS boards, both in boards and to government and the wider public, that there is more work to do and I will update Parliament on that. Ms Lennon says she has many questions. Well, I look forward to hearing some of them tomorrow at the meeting when uh, I am sure that she will be there, where we can begin to answer some of those questions when she's had the opportunity to fully read the report. But the, the focus has to be on two things. How do we ensure that that new site, that major facility of strategic importance is safe and that patients and staff can move there safely? I am absolutely focused on that. How do we understand why this happened, not just what happened, but why it happened? I've taken account of that in my statement and I've said I've updated Parliament. And then what do we do in terms of wider infrastructure projects across the NHS, some of which have been delivered most recently on time, on budget and in compliance? Thank you. Can I remind members, if you want to ask a question, you must press the request to speak button. Call Angela Constance, followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, our children and young people clearly deserve more than the senior managers of NHS Lothian have been delivering. With the escalation to level four announced by the Cabinet Secretary today, does she agree with me that the board's senior management should reflect on the current situation and work constructively with any programme manager put in place by the government to deliver the new hospital and to get the finger out and get performance back on track? Cabinet Secretary. So it's important to be clear that, and I thank the member for the question, it's important to be clear that the escalation to level four is for this project. The board is already at level three in terms of other matters around performance. And of course, Ms. Constance is right that the board uh, should be and is focused with the additional support that we have given them on their performance across a range of issues and already is making progress in those areas. The point about the level four escalation is a recognition of the importance of this area of work and the need to provide an external project director who I am confident the board and senior management will work closely with in order to deliver what we need done. In terms of reflection, I know from speaking to the chair of the board uh, this morning uh, and in other conversations that the senior team in NHS Lothian are reflecting on uh, how we have got to this situation. Uh, we will continue those discussions with them. And as I said in my statement, I will update Parliament on the outcome from that. Michelle Ballantyne, followed by George Adam. Thank you, presiding officer. When I asked you on the 27th of June whether you felt it was going to be safe to open the sick kids, you responded that you had had all the reassurance, reassurances that you had tasked NHS Lothian to give you. So my question is simple. What scrutiny did you put in place and what lessons had you learnt from the failure of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital? And therefore, what reassurances did you actually receive that those lessons had been learnt? Because this seems to stem no, back from I the tender process. Thank you. And can I just say to members, you mustn't use the second person. I will let it go by, but the term you is the second person, Ms Valentine. And I want people to remember to say the member or whatever, but not to use that. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. I'm glad, and I thank Ms. Ballantyne for raising that question. Uh, when I gave you that answer on the 27th of June, it was precisely because I had had assurances from the NHS board in Lothian that uh, all of the issues of compliance had been met and the lessons had been learned uh, that had come at that point from the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. I was advised on the 2nd of July 
that the ventilation system in critical care was not compliant with national standards and guidance, and I acted on the 4th of July in that regard. So uh, I, I gave you the answer based on the information that I had been given by NHS Lothian at that time. George Adam, followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. Paramount to all of this was and remains patient safety. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline what steps are planned by the NHS Board for the existing sites to ensure that they are as effective and as safe as possible for all patients? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to the member uh, for that answer. Uh, we asked NHS Lothian uh, to produce for us uh, an additional plan in terms of mitigation uh, for the existing site, both at Sheen's uh, and the DCN site at the Western General, uh, and to give us an estimate of the cost that's contained within the overall estimate. Uh, that includes uh, an increase in the maintenance uh, levels uh, and additional expenditure there, but it also includes looking at a modular unit uh, and they're actively underway in terms of DCN. There may be other alternatives, one of which was raised with me this morning, uh, that may be clinically more suitable, uh, but that uh, the DCN site is the most critical area, and I am very keen that with the clinician's involvement, we identify what can be done to manage uh, the safety of that site uh, until we can move uh, to the new site uh, at the Royal Hospital. Uh, and in terms of Sheen's, the other area that is being actively looked at is in terms of the, out, the location of outpatients so that we can increase the, the footprint of A&E in the existing Sheen site. Daniel Johnson, followed by Rhoda Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Further to that point, the, the Sheen site is in my constituency. And while her statement mentions the cost of remedial action to the new site, what is the total cost of keeping the old site open, which was not programmed, replacing equipment that was due to be provided in the new hospital, maintenance to a building well past its sell-by date, and indeed contracts cancelled that have had to be renewed? What's the cost at the old site to Captain keep it open? Secretary. So the cost of maintaining the existing sites, which in includes an element of dual running, the total uh, estimated cost I have there is between six and seven million pounds. Um, that includes uh, some of the uh, factors that I've mentioned, the interim modular solution and equipment, including uh, in uh, neuroradiology, as well as additional investments in the current uh, Sheen site and in the DCN. Uh, as the plan is developed and there is detail under all of those, I'm very happy uh, to provide that to the member so that he uh, can be assured that all the issues that need to be taken account in his view are being taken account of. Rona Mackay, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary expand on the role of the new national body being set up to ensure that all future NHS building projects are protected against problems with water, ventilation and drainage systems? Cabinet Secretary. Um, so, as I mentioned, we will move swiftly to establish that national body. Uh, its objective is to uh, better manage uh, and reduce the risks in terms of the healthcare built environment. Its final uh, function will, of course, be informed by the independent review being undertaken uh, on Queen Elizabeth. It will have oversight, though, for the design, planning, construction and maintenance of major NHS Scotland infrastructure developments. It will hold expertise in these areas, including in microbiology, and criti critically, it will have a clear understanding of the interrelationship between the built environment and effective prevention and control. It will also have a compliance function, uh, and so the work is underway at this point to bring that body together, and again, I will uh, make sure that Parliament is updated as we make progress in that regard. Alison Johnson, followed by Alec Cole-Hamilton. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary states that the additional cost of this shocking case will be borne by the health portfolio, so ultimately the people of Scotland. Um, those who support private finance claim that the risk is always borne by the private sector. So this is yet another case that reveals that to be false. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that her government's non-profit distributing model, just like PFI before it, means that it's the public that pick up the cost when things go wrong. Cabinet Secretary. There, there is nothing in either of the reports that I commissioned to suggest that the funding model holds any responsibility for the situation that we are facing and the need 
to halt the migration to the new site in the interest of patient safety. Um, the, what I am keen to do, though, and why I said that the additional cost would be met by the health portfolio overall, is I am keen to ensure that uh, frontline patient-facing services uh, are not asked to bear any of this additional cost. And so within the overall health portfolio, uh, we will uh, manage that additional cost without an impact on patient services. Alec Cole Hamilton, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I restate my call for a full public inquiry into this matter? The KPMG report tells us that this disastrous outcome was baked into the hospital build from day one because of reference to a flawed environmental matrix in the tender document. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what oversight did the government have over that tender? And if, if the most optimistic expectation that staff and patients will have to wait another year for the new sick kids to open, what is the worst case scenario for how long the delay will last? Cabinet Secretary. So let me deal with the uh, timeline first of all. Uh, I have uh, consciously uh, ensured that the timeline that I have given Parliament today, that is autumn uh, for the full children's services and spring for DCN, uh, is such that people can rely on that timeline. Uh, if it's possible for us to see the work undertaken that is necessary uh, quicker, uh, then obviously uh, services will move sooner than that. Uh, but those are the timelines uh, that it is right and proper uh, for me to confidently uh, be able to give this Parliament. Uh, Mr Cole Hamilton is absolutely right. Uh, KPMG report identifies uh, a flaw in the environmental matrix document in 2012, uh, which gave the wrong specification for critical care ventilation. Uh, but also points out that uh, subsequent uh, uh, guidance and documents gave the right specification and mistakes were made and opportunities were missed to spot those uh, and correct matters. Um, Mr Cole Hamilton asked about government oversight. Government oversight in terms of the current relationship uh, between uh, NHS boards and these infrastructure projects is primarily around issues of uh, finance, uh, and timelines. It is not in the area uh, of uh, these specifications, which is one of the reasons why we will establish that new national body, because that, in my view, uh, gap and deficiency needs to be rectified, and government needs to have greater oversight in terms of design and compliance and the interrelationship between the build and effective prevention and control. Emma Harper, followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary, I welcome the publication of these reports. Would the Cabinet Secretary join me in acknowledging the contrib contribution of all staff who have continued to provide high-quality clinical services at both the Children's Hospital and the Department of Clinical Neuroscience in very difficult circumstances? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Ms Harper for that. I absolutely will. I, with the Chief Medical Officer and the Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, uh, visited um, both the Sheen site and uh, DCN in the Western General in July and had that opportunity to speak to uh, different groups of staff to explain my decision to halt the move, but also to hear what they believed uh, was needed, needed to be done. Uh, part of that has informed the work that will go into uh, additional investment into those additional sites uh, to see them through uh, the coming period. Uh, but, uh, but I was struck most of all uh, by staff's continued, undoubted the disappointment. They were ready to mo move to a site that they had been anticipating for some time. They had made their own arrangements to accommodate that. Undoubtedly disappointed in those circumstances, but very, very uh, impressed by how quickly they were moving to be able to continue professionally to deliver high quality care. I've written to them then, I wrote to them again today, and I intend to visit those sites again uh, this month uh, to talk through with staff what I have laid out uh, in Parliament, what the reports say, and to answer any questions. I've also offered to meet the Partnership Forum of NHS Lothian, which, as members know, are the unions uh, and representatives of staff from across that health board. I see further questioners. I want to get you all in, but you must make your question short. Gordon Lindhurst, followed by Sarah Boyack. Um, the Cabinet Secretary has confirmed in her statement that the payment of £1.35 million per month will continue and a further £16 million of additional costs incurred. 
Can she clarify the detail of these additional costs and whether any of them will be recovered for the public purse? Cabinet Secretary. Um, so, uh, as I said, the additional costs cover the cost of maintaining existing sites, which I uh, outlined for uh, Mr uh, Johnson, uh, project team costs and the costs of um, the work that needs to be done to remedy the new site. So the cost of upgrading uh, the ventilation system in critical care, fixing the ventilation uh, and other matters elsewhere on that site, which NSS report identifies. I'm again happy to provide the detail of that uh, to the member if he would find that helpful. Uh, in terms of whether any of it is recoverable, um, it, it is uh, something that uh, KPMG report uh, didn't express an opinion on the accountability of individuals or organisations. Uh, that will be something the board will wish to consider, uh, given that it holds uh, the various contracts. It will wish to consider that with its legal advisers, and we will continue to have discussions with them on that. Sarah Boyd, followed by David Torrance. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm how many procedures and operations have been cancelled as a result of these most recent delays? And will the Cabinet Secretary release the programme of meetings she and her officials have had with NHS Lothian, the project team and Integrated Health Solutions Lothian, where this project and the delays which have gone on for years took place so that parents and NHS staff can see for themselves the failing in governance which have plagued this vital and much needed set of hospital facilities? It wasn't really a short question, but never mind, Ms. Boy, uh, Cabinet Secretary. It is important before I answer that question to note that the KPMG report confirms that NHS Lothian's governance uh, processes uh, were exactly as they should be. I'm very happy uh, to issue uh, a list as uh, Ms Boyack uh, requests. I'd be happy to uh, do that if she would um, just send me a note specifically. I didn't write everything down there uh, that, she, that she wants to look at. In terms of uh, procedures, uh, there was, I think from memory, just under 4,000 uh, patients who had to be notified uh, of a change in location for their appointments uh, and procedures. Uh, NHS Lothian staff worked remarkably well to ensure that that happened, uh, both by telephone and followed up in writing. Uh, my understanding is that no uh, appointments were cancelled. There may have been some that had to be rearranged. Uh, but no appointments were cancelled. In addition, we put in place a helpline which remains in place uh, in this month, uh, the number of calls uh, have declined significantly, uh, seven in the most recent week, but that helpline will remain in place uh, until we are sure it's no longer needed. And initially, what was put in place was staff located at the new site uh, in order to ensure that anyone who turned up there uh, would be assisted to quickly get to uh, whether it was Sheen's or DCN uh, and their appointment uh, undertaken in that place. David Torrance, very, very briefly. The Cabinet Secretary was clear in the closing of her statement, and it is worthy of repeating. Will she confirm that while this is a situation no one would choose, this government will resolve it, will deliver a safe migration of services, and this children's hospital will open? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I absolutely do confirm that. Patient safety, first and last, is my priority. Thank you very much, and I thank members. We got through all the questions, and we'll have a short pause before we move on to the next item of business.